The Diablo 3 team is made up of people who love Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. The Diablo franchise is one of the first games that I ever played that made me really identify as a gamer. I remember playing the game until the late hours of the night and getting yelled at to go to bed. Diablo was a game that sort of changed gaming overall. To think back on that legacy and to have an opportunity to make something special, we wanted to do a big event that honored that history. And we had only an idea to do some music in town at first, but everyone on the team was really passionate about doing more. So this is the 20th anniversary of Diablo, and we decided to do a big homage to that game. And so we made this whole dungeon that basically is all of Diablo 1 made with Diablo 3 assets. On all 16 levels of the original Diablo game. Diablo was a game that sort of changed Blizzard and changed gaming overall. The year it came out was a year that RPGs were declared to be dead. Um, PC gaming's death had been declared multiple times, and Blizzard was a company that sort of always proved that wrong. So our goal for the Darkening of Tristram event is to give uh, our community an opportunity to go back to the game that started it all, to the dungeon that started it all. So during the month of January, cultists will be appearing all over Sanctuary. The cultists that were loyal to Adria are trying to resurrect her work. They know that the Nephilim is the only one that can stop them. So their plan is to ambush you while you go about your day. When you slay the cultists, you'll have the opportunity to loot one of their missives. And these are communications between different cultists. And they're all centered around the town of Old Tristram. And when you go there, near the fountain in the center of town is this magical portal. When you enter it, you enter the world of Diablo 1, and you enter it in style, in something that we call glorious retrovision. You get a pixelated filter that overlays the whole screen. The camera's moved and your animations have changed. The player, the monsters, everyone's locked to eight degrees of rotation. Your character walks everywhere, just like old times. You'll notice that the sound is a little bit tinnier. The sounds repeat more often, which was a classic thing in 90s games. We really wanted to capture the feeling that we all remember from playing Diablo 1. Bring the bosses from Diablo 1 into Diablo 3 was an interesting challenge because in many ways they're simpler, but there are certain iconic abilities that were really important to capture. The speed that the Butcher charges you when you open his door, his overhand attacks and his swings. He's really hard, he's really fast, he hits you and he kills you really quickly. And that's exactly how I felt the first time that I ran into the Butcher in Diablo 1. Even though we have the Butcher model in Diablo 3, he's a different Butcher and he's very detailed. So we actually made a more Diablo 1 version of the Butcher. When you start the Darkening of Tristram event, make sure you poke around and click on everything there. Talk to everybody you can talk to, look at your objects, and you're gonna find some unusual um, references to the Diablo 1 game in there. The other thing that, that I like to do is start with a fresh character and play through it uh, from level one to really get that Diablo 1 feeling. When Diablo 1 was created, there was very little documentation. So when we went to recreate the dungeon, we didn't know exactly what the intent of the original designers were. We didn't know exactly what all the monsters did. But you know who had put this together over the last 20 years was the community. We actually started uh, referencing community-made wikis and guides for more information on this, and it was very, very helpful and very thorough. We started to borrow some of that collective memory so that we could together form this experience that most closely matched that of Diablo 1. One thing we decided we couldn't do, we just didn't have time to redo the user interface. It was out of scope, we didn't have time. But a group of artists, led by one of our artists, a guy named Josh Manning, decided that they were gonna do it in their own time. So we came in one day and the UI was done. And that, I think, just shows the passion that the team has for Diablo 1 and, and this opportunity to honor a 20th anniversary of this game that we love so much.